And Dr. Ricky Ott is on the line with me. Earlier today, I said, let's get an expert on to tell us about this stuff. Dr. Ott is a marine biologist and, and a toxicologist. A, an Alaskan, former Alaskan commercial fisherman has written two books on the Exxon Valdez disaster and its aftermath. Uh, Dr. Ott's website, Ricky, R-I-K-I-O-T-T dot com. Dr. Ricky Ott, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tom. Glad to be here. Thanks for being with us. I understand you're down in the Gulf right now. Just got in yesterday, yes. So what's the situation? Where, where are we at? What brought this about? Where is it going? What can be done? <laughs> um, <Lothar>. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how this happened is because our corporations especially our big ones, lobby um, to reduce safety prevention measures and reduce, weaken environmental regulation. And, I mean, we all know this, and every now and then it all adds up to be the perfect storm, and that's what happened. Um, yeah. for, um, our, for, but, our, for our uh, viewers on, on uh, Dish Network, by the way, we're running a video or we, as B-roll of a blowout that just happened in Venezuela three days ago where an oil rig just went up in flames. Uh, this, is, uh, this is nothing, uh, this, this is not as unique as we, as we seem to think. No, it's not. Um, we had refineries blow up. Uh, we have, you know, coal mines uh, collapsing. And it's, part of it is because these big corporations have weakened the very uh, regulations and laws that, that we, the people, need in order to be protected from things like this. So right. most of these accidents are human error um, and human greed. Um, yeah. So what's happening? What's happening is that we have an uncontrolled leak. It's really more than a spill. A spill implies that there's a, a contained volume that mm. can spill out, and we don't have that. We have a, a pipe going into the earth, and, uh, you know, until that uh, the leaks in the pipe are capped, um, we're just going to have more and more oil leaking out. And any idea what the distance is between the bottom of the ocean at 5,000 feet and the and the top of the oil uh, pool that they tapped into? Uh, actually, I just heard and I yesterday on uh, Anderson Cooper of all things mm -hmm. that um, they have illegally uh, drilled. Their permit went to 18,000 feet, and they were at 25. So they had pushed the limits. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 25,000 well, feet is damn deep. I mean, that's that's got to be really, really hot stuff coming up out of there. Five miles yeah. plus? I mean, geez. Yeah, that, I thought that was the death, the thickness of the crust. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? This is yeah. like a hot air balloon going off, man. Yeah. You know? yeah. so, uh, so, so the impact in Louisiana that you're seeing? Well, what we have is we have the industry putting a lot of money into technology to get the oil out of the earth and not all that much money into... Uh, what the heck do we do once it's spilled? Um, and um, the oil has not yet hit shore, but that is not the only problem. I mean, what you see is not all that you get. Right. And what I'm talking about here is that this sweet Louisiana crude um, is has a, a, a larger uh, fraction, a proportion of light ends, what's called light ends, mm -hmm. dissolves very readily into the water column. So mm -hmm. underneath the sheen, what you have is literally a cloud of dissolved oil. And that uh, dissolved oil is very toxic for everything in the water column. So right. fish eggs, shellfish eggs, um, uh, plus fish. Um, and so one of the things that the community is bracing for are closures in fishery this year. Right. But what I'm trying to communicate is, what about the, all the year classes that are born into this spill, like what we saw with Exxon Valdez, that then when they fail to show up as adults some years later down the road, and you have an ecosystem collapse like what we had in 1993, um, what about then? Who's going to pay for those long-term damages then? Right. So what's being done is there's pretty much the same scramble that we saw in Alaska where uh, nobody really knows what to do. People are mobilizing uh, volunteers, um, and mostly the volunteers are going out actually now and cleaning beaches before the oil hits because hmm. um, the word is slowly getting out that this stuff is toxic, and right. you've got to be trained properly. Just to work to with it and around it. Right. Yeah, there, were, there was the Exxon Valdez crud. People, were, people got sick from, from trying to clean it up. 
just that like there was the 9-11 crud and now soon there will and and there was the Katrina crud because there was so much to, so many toxic chemicals including a large amount of oil and gasoline that got spilled into that water in, in Katrina and now there's going to be the BP uh, Gulf uh, crud. yeah BP okay. Transocean Halliburton crud no well you know what that crud already existed but you know how these cruds never have the company name attached so we're just going to yeah. see probably the Gulf crud but the reason we're going to see it is because OSHA um, passed in 1970, of course, does not uh, recognize chemical-induced poisoning. In other words, work-related illnesses wow. that that have symptoms similar to cold and flu. That's the, all the crud, okay? Right, right. And what OSHA does is, I kid you not, okay, it has a one-sentence exemption in its hazardous waste uh, re- regulations for reporting colds and flu. If they're not work-related, you don't have to report them. Symptoms of cold and flu mimic chemical-induced poisoning. Right. So, and that's saying, what the Bush administration did with the 9-11 workers. They said these guys have colds. Yes. And, and so we have a very handy loophole in OSHA to, ex- to nullify the whole act and make it meaningless to protect our workers from the very thing that it purports to protect workers from, chemical a- poisoning. Absolutely yeah. amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Dr. Ricky Ott is with us, uh, R-I-K-I-O-T-T dot com, her website, uh, the marine biologist, toxicologist, a former Alaska commercial fisherman, a uh, fisherwoman, and uh, author of th- two books on the Exxon Valdez disaster and its aftermath. Dr. Ott, thanks so much for dropping by. Thank you, Tom. Good talking.